An Oxford Oximizer battery charger for motorbike batteries. This one belongs to another YouTuber called Thomas Nagy, an electrician in London, who basically records his daily life doing electrical work, which is very interesting. And he sent me this. He said, well, let's start opening it. I'm guessing I can see rubber feet in the bottom that may hide. May hide. Are they just stuck in? Or are they going to be? Ooh, they're quite hard to get out. Okay. Were they stuck in? No, it's just a friction fit. And they've got little plugs, but I see the screws. This is good. It does suggest that we're going to get into it fairly straightforwardly. But uh, yes, Thomas Nagy, he uh, had this charging his battery in his motorbike. And then he went out one day and this unit was off and the battery in his motorbike was completely flat. So he sent it to me for analysis. I shall provide a link to his channel, by the way. It makes good viewing. It shows his everyday electrical installation work. Um in London, and uh, it's quite good reading the comments as well, looking at all the armchair experts telling him how he should have done things, as happens. Lots of uh, conflicting, misguiding information that does not inspire confidence in the electrical industry, but Thomas Nigge is logical and sensible about his work. The only thing that really annoys me about his channel is that he does wear a shirt with the NIC EIC logo on it, and you know that pushes my button, that organisation. Okay, let's uh, take a look at this. It's quite complex inside. It's got a lot more than I was expecting. It's got the LCD display. Is that also acting as a controller? Or is that the controller there? There isn't a number on that. Uh, but if this thing is completely dead, the first thing I'd suspect is the power supply. I'm not seeing bulged capacitors. I'm not seeing skid marks either. Let's see if something apocalyptic has happened. Let's check the fuse. It might just be the fuse, but usually when the fuse is gone, there's something that caused it. I see what looks like a fuse or a resistor. It's it's not showing continuity. Is that a fuse or is it a resistor? It looks like a fuse. Yeah, it's marked F1. Okay. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I think I can see a skid mark. Let's uh, zoom down in this. Oh, yes. I can see... Oh, shit. Right, okay, I can see a, a couple of burnt resistors and a really badly shaped lead. Right, tell you what, just give me a second. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to just take a picture of this so you can actually see it and then we'll see what else we can do here. Let's actually pull this out. Does it come out like this? Yes, it does. Anything blown off the back? No, there's not. Oh, look at the separation. That's nice. It's a proper charger. Oh, it's sleeved. Um, class Y capacitors. Rightio, uh, just give me a moment. I'm just going to uh, get some pictures taken of this so you can actually see in greater detail what's actually happened here. Exhibit number one. Two smoked resistors, a little 8th watt resistor here, and then another resistor here, which have had their markings blown off, which is a bit of a shame. Now, part of me wondered, had that lead of this rather sloppily positioned resistor actually rubbed through that? And then I looked at the other end of the lead of this resistor, um, and uh, it is not very good. They've got the, the lead has been so mashed that it's pretty much on the borderline of contact. Now, I haven't actually moved that. Let's actually test that. I would have expected a bit more of a bang because ultimately, although that may have actually fused there because uh, that is effectively shorting out the supply of that uh, short circuit. Let's bring the meter in and probe that. That is very sloppy manufacturing. So what's the best way to make connection to this here? Let's go to here. Oh, I can actually go on to that diode and that connection. It's not bridged. It's on the borderline of bridging. Hmm, they're very close. That is a bit crappy. So uh, that makes me wonder then if the resistors that have blown are leading to the transistor. And that makes me wonder if the transistors then actually failed as well. 
the way you can check that, if you put it across the transistor, quite often you'll find a dead short circuit, which is a dead short circuit. Between all pins, it's just dead. So, to fix this, you'd need to ascertain if... Um, oh, let's check the bridge rectifier as well, because sometimes the bridge rectifier cops it. 0.6. Let's go to one going the same way. 0.6. So the bridge rectifier looks as though it may have survived this. It looks as though it's the apocalypse has occurred around just those resistors. Okay, I should actually have had that in. This was displaying 0.6 volts, the forward voltage. Uh, let me just demonstrate that again. So here's a typical diode. Um, if it was displaying a short circuit, it would beep, but it's displaying 0.6, which is the forward voltage of the diode which uh, on continuity, which is uh, what we want here. So that's a common failure thing. I mean, that has seen a lot of current because it's blowing the fuse here. Um, so I wonder... Uh, I wonder if it's just been a brief short and that fuse has done its job and protected part of the circuitry. It's certainly not protected the transistor. Uh, so if I was fixing this, if it was viable to fix it, I think the replacement costs about £30. You'd have to change this transistor here. You'd have to try and find the value of these resistors, and you might find that in the data sheet, or if you had a similar unit, you could actually check out the value of those resistors because there's certainly... Uh, where is the, that picture with those resistors? There it is. They're a bit fried. I mean, the the carbon film or metal film that has literally been blown clear in them. I can see some clues. There's brown, black, and then this mystery track, the one that's just blown off. It might be visible from underneath. But you'd have to clear the components out and then try and lift that up and see what the colour was. This one also, it looks so biased. I wonder if this has flashed over onto that resistor lead the way that's failed. I wonder if that has just barely touched and it's rubbed through the uh, the enamel coat in that resistor. Sloppy manufacturing. Um, but uh, I'd change the transistor, I'd change those two resistors, I might change this resistor as well, the one that's skewed everywhere, and I might change that capacitor. I might change all the, the rectifier diodes, and just if you're going that far anyway, uh, I'd change the chip because there's a very good chance that if the this resistor here that is splattered leads to the chip, so there's a good chance the chip itself has failed. And uh, if you're doing that, you might as well change things that they mean electrolytic as well. So it would be quite an extensive thing. It would be viable if this was a very limited, if you couldn't get a replacement power supply, if this was out some specialist machine. But in this instance, it's just a, it's a standard mass produced battery charger um, and maintainer that just basically tops the battery up and then trickle charges it and keeps it at the set level while it's in storage. Um, but it's quite complex. It's a shame it's just fallen down somewhat in the manufacturing there. I'm looking at that. Let me see if there's a skid. I really want to know if there's a skid mark there. Let's uh, lift that lead up and see if it did actually bridge. I'm not seeing a sooty skid mark. I think that was just on the borderline of touching. I think what's actually happened is purely around these resistors. And there is a good chance that something's happened here where it's showing a bit of a skid. But there we go. I, would, I wouldn't suspect the transformer's faulty. Um, I wonder what else could really have been affected by that. It depends how, if the chip arrested the problem when it actually the fault came back to it or if it uh, caused failure of other components in the vicinity. But it's one of these things that if you bought spare components, you'd probably have to buy a couple of each just as a precaution in case it just went bang again and you plugged it in because some other random component you weren't expecting had failed. But there we go. That's uh, Thomas Nagy's bike battery charger it's dead it's completely dead and not really viable to try and repair that it would be definitely cheaper just to buy a complete new one but interesting stuff so i shall put a link to thomas's channel um right there and uh you can check that out and see what you think of uh his electrical escapades not that there's much happening at the moment due to the current lockdown for the p pandemic at the moment but there we go interesting to open up and take a look inside anyway